It is incredible how much information da Vinci encoded and encrypted in his famous Vitruvian Man drawing. Now da Vinci hit a bunch of information in the Last Supper and all of his works, but specifically in the Vitruvian Man, there is a wealth of information. And I'm just going to scratch the surface here by looking at uh, the two pyramids, Khufu and Menkara, that da Vinci plainly uh, tucked away inside his drawing of the Vitruvian Man. Now you need to follow Robert Grant and Alan Green on uh, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Do a search for them. I'll leave it in the description. But uh, they found the Great Pyramid in da, Vin da Vinci's Vitruvian Man. Okay, so that is a superimposition of the Great Pyramid over the Vitruvian Man, the way they found it. You can see there. Okay, so uh, the horizontal lines that da Vinci drew on the Vitruvian Man seem to be pointless. Like, why did he draw those there? But they happen to correspond to major passages in the Great Pyramid. The ground level is there. Uh, the Queen's Chamber is implied. The subterranean chamber horizontal is there where the floor of the King's Chamber is. And then in these uh, possibly undiscovered chambers, there are horizontals in the upper part of the Vitruvian Man indicating that da Vinci probably knew of, of hidden chambers up there that we haven't yet found. Uh, da Vinci was kind of quietly in Egypt and seemed to ha have a special knowledge about the Great Pyramid. Robert Grant has done some work on that. The encoding of the planets of the solar system is here. In the instant case, the proportions of the Earth and Moon. In this Vitruvian Man drawing, the proportions of the Earth and Moon are plainly revealed. It's incredible. Okay, but it was Grant's find of the Great Pyramid angle here. So between those two blue lines... Grant found a 51.84 degree angle, which is the slope angle of the Great Pyramid, a very unique slope angle. And so he said to Alan Green, you know, can you find the Great Pyramid here? It seems like it would be. And, and so that would lead to a pyramid here because that's where that 51.8 degree angle is. So that would be the pyramid that's derived from that find. And so it's not in the same direction as the Vitruvian Man with the bottom at the bottom. Instead, it's, you know, like coming out of his right ear at a 90 degree uh, rotation. But then uh, Green was able to find indications that it should be placed this way by those horizontal lines. And there's a couple other indicators that indicated the Great Pyramid was meant to be encoded right there. Okay, not like that, although that's the way it was originally revealed, the 51.84. But actually, the first pyramid pinpointed by da Vinci is the third pyramid, Menkara's, because it doesn't require any derivation. But I should start out by talking about squaring of the circle here. In da Vinci's famous drawing, there's uh, the, the circle and the square. And so many have assumed that like the Great Pyramid solves the supposed conundrum of squaring the circle. Like how do you, what formula do, do you follow in taking a square to make a similar circle that would have the same size circumference or the same size area? Well, no formula exists. This was one of the supposedly unsolved problems of mathematics. And so people assume that, well, da Vinci's indicating the squaring of the circle by the, his drawing of the square and by his drawing of the circle. But these do not square the circle. If you take the circumference, it's 27.14 versus 28.18. That's not squaring the circle. Those aren't equal. If somebody owes you $28 and they pay you $27, you're, you're not even. Okay, and by area, if you go by area... Again, if somebody owes you $58 and they give you $49, you're not square. So da Vinci's square and circle do not square the circle by either of the two accepted method, methods, by circumference or by area. What's he getting into? Well, he's getting into a, a lot more. But one of the things that he gets into is uh, the two pyramids that are derived. We've already seen the Great Pyramid. I'm about to show you Menkara's are defined by where his fingers hit. Do you see the fingers of the two different sets of arms? Outstretched, they touch the square that's actually there. The, what, the hands that are raised actually touch that square on the top line where it meets the circle. So if you draw a line straight down from there, that's what defines the Great Pyramid. But Menkara is defined by, you can see a ruler that I've got there. It goes through the belly button on the bottom side of that ruler to the corner there. And if you start from this pyramid-shaped mark, which da Vinci has put above the belly button, 
It looks like the top of a pyramid. It doesn't really correspond. I don't have a, a, a pyramidian above my belly button, but, but da Vinci draws this. And if, so if you use that and you draw the line, and here's one, here you're using the top side of this ruler going through that mark. Notice it's 51 degrees. It's about the slope angle of the Pyramid of Menkara. So the Pyramid of Menkara is revealed here by da Vinci. So there's the Pyramid of Menkara. We just overlay it, and so there it is. The pyramid, so, so da Vinci is revealing a couple of these pyramids, Khufu and Menkar. So let's look at this a little bit. So uh, they have similar slope angles. Uh, the, the top Menkar is obviously on a different scale because the Great Pyramid is, you know, much bigger. It's got, you know, four times the square area down below. So anyways, there's Menkar on top. So they're the only two eight-sided pyramids we know in the world. So Menkara and Khufu both share that. That's unbelievable. That was only really noticed in relatively recent times. Uh, you might have heard it said that the Great Pyramid's eight sides only show up on the equinoxes, you know, and from the air. That's that's uh, an urban legend. You can see the uh, those eight sides in, in many different settings. I've seen them when I've been to Giza. Okay, so they both have similar slope angles. The base side, so for Khufu, one base side is 440 cubits, and for Menkar, it's 200 cubits. Now, it's interesting, I have found, and I've done other programs about this and will continue to, inside the Great Pyramid, I found the Hemayunu template. Hemayunu is the, is the architect of the Great Pyramid, and there's this, uh, here's a top view now of the Hemayunu template, which has got sides of 200 cubits, just like Menkara. So it, uh, one side is, the, is where the notch is, the famous notch on the northeast side that's very visible on the outside of the Great Pyramid. The boat pits outside I've shown, they point to that southwest corner. Then the air shafts exit right at this template, the King's Chamber uh, South air shaft and uh, uh, the King's Chamber South North and South uh, air shafts exit on this template. There are other things here too, but I'm just showing that this this red, this template, this is the top view of the Great Pyramid. I'm calling this the Hemayunu template because it touches base with so many things, and it's the same size as the base of the Menkara Pyramid. Now, of course, the three Giza pyramids are famous for their correspondence, Robert Baval's Orion correlation theory, the correspondence between Orion stars and these pyramids. So the names that cor the names of the stars that score correspond to the pyramids are interesting. For Khufu, it's al Nitak, the star al Nitak, And uh, basically that means girdle or belt. And then for Menkara, it's Mintaka, a very similar word, and uh, that means belt. So both names, girdle and belt, Mintaka and al, al Nitak, refer to all three pyramids. So it's like the individual takes its identity from the group. There's a tight connection between these Giza pyramids, and the names show that. And so this connection that da Vinci's trying to show us is there, too. There's a connection between Khufu and Menkara. And I'm suggesting that the Khufu pyramid spawns the Menkara pyramid. It's got the Hemayunu template, which has got the same size as the base of the Menkara pyramid. So somehow I think, again, that Khufu is spawning Menkara. Okay, so here is uh, the Vitruvian man with some, uh, you know, sacred geometry lines on it. But, okay, so that is where the Pyramid of Menkara would go. That's the same shape. And again, we've taken those special lines we showed you and drawn to the outside of those, uh, the, where the square that da Vinci drew is. So that, that reveals the Menkara Pyramid. Now, this is the Great Pyramid. Now, it goes, uh, I haven't, you can see by the red lines there, goes to the uh, the inside lines, the one where his raised hands touch the, uh, it's a different square actually than the one that da Vinci drew. So both pyramids are there, but if you're going to make the Menkara pyramid the same scale, because both of these are scale, uh, the, the top red is the scale of the Great Pyramid, the bottom yellow is a scale of Menkara, but if you want to use the same scale for these two, okay, that's what Menkara would look like. So what's interesting now, now that we've, because, and, and there, da Vinci is plainly showing that, this this size uh, comparison here between these two pyramids, he's got that. That's It's shown there. Okay, so if you take the ratio of the base area of Khufu in red to the base area of Menkara in yellow, and I'll just, uh, you know, bypass the math, it's 4 over 5 cubed. So the Great Pyramid 4, the Menkara 5 cubed, 4 over 5 cubed. Okay, so the interesting ratio. 
Okay, so what does that tell us? Well, that just happens to be the face angle of the red pyramid and the top of the bent pyramid. So I've shown the red pyramid there outlined in red, and the bent pyramid has the exact same, it's the exact same height as the red pyramid, and the top part of the bent pyramid is the same as the red pyramid. It's just that its lower part is at a different angle. But basically, the slope face there of the top of the bent and the red is phi over 4 over phi cubed as an angle. Okay, interesting. So now we've got Khufu, Menkara, the bent and the red, these major pyramids. Okay, the Menkara pyramid is built on an 8 to 5 ratio. You know, a base of 8 to a rise to a height of 5. Okay, well look at the Dmitchi man from his, from the center uh, of his navel out to the, uh, uh, the circle. Uh, that's 5. And across his arms, that's 8. And his height is 8. And so the Vitruvian man is built on a 5 to 8. And just like Menkara is 5 to 8. But also... The Khufu Pyramid, the Red Pyramid, the Bent Pyramid, and the Pyramid of May Doom all are built on these Fibonacci numbers 5 and 8. There's this incredible mystical connection between these pyramids, and it's revealed in Da Vinci's Vitruvian Man. So the immediate conclusion for me is since you've got the sun, the moon, the planets, you've got all these pyramids there, and the picture is man uh, a very perfect appearing man, uh, you know, drawn in his anatomical form. And this says this, that this is a call for each one of us to find our place in the universe and to be in right relationship with the sun, the moon, the elements, and God himself. To think that we can define, as I think is the modern conceit, to think that we can find a meaning that we can just invent ourselves is ridiculous. We are part of a web, we are part of a connected web with divine implications connecting us together. Da Vinci shows us in these connections with sun, moon, stars, and pyramids in the Vitruvian Man, the immediate conclusion, find your place in the universe. And the implication is, I think, that the Alpha and the Omega will help you. It's there. The Vitruvian Man says so. Well, the work of AIP, the American Institute of Pyramid Research, this is, I'm the director, this is my full-time work. And uh, so this is just an appeal. Uh, I, I put a lot of my personal funds into AIP. Uh, I do side work. And uh, I have some donors on Patreon and other places. So this is my appeal to you. If you want to see the things that we've found at Giza, we've got more to show that from our last trip there, I'm still unpacking some of the findings in the, in the markings on the north and east side of the Great Pyramid. But uh, if you want to help this work continue, please uh, look at the links below to our Patreon channel. You know, here I recently took down a big tree. It's dangerous work, but, you know, I make pretty good money doing this. So this is one of the ways I support the Institute. But, uh, you know, I, I, that takes a lot of time and energy, and I prefer to put that energy into uh, uh, finding out mysterious things that are revealed about the Great Pyramid. So help this work if you can. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you.